Hey everybody, it's Caleb here. Today I want to talk about the Shapo Couture Axe Carp Upgrade Kit that Inventables sent me to review. Now, I didn't pay for this. All I did was agree to have a little Inventables splash screen on the front of this video and make a video, uh, you know, talking about this uh, kit and also give my honest review of the kit and what I think about it. So, I think that's pretty good, uh, uh, you know, stipulations on an agreement for free stuff. So, hopefully you do too. But at any rate, you get to see uh, some really cool uh, parts of this whole kit and what it actually goes into it. What you see on the screen right now is pretty much just all of the components that go into this kit. I have to say, right off the bat, opening up the case and everything and looking at all the parts, they're very nicely made. Uh, the quality is really nice. The machining on parts like the X carriage is really, really nice. I really like the belt clips. Uh, and I'm very interested in the Y gantry plates, how they're going to all play out, you know, because there's new placement on the motors and where the, you know, and everything's offset a little bit. I'm very interested in all that goes, and I'm really curious to play around with the uh, Z car or the Z axis um, assembly because it's going to change over too on this. And now I've got a little bit of a, a fun little bit to do with the fact that I've got a custom Z axis that I'm planning on using. So that's another neat thing is I get to play around with, you know, messing around with these components and and seeing just how easy they kind of shift modded parts that were made for a Shape Oko to these x carve parts. I have a feeling that they'll work okay, but it's going to be interesting to, you know, see what all that goes into it. So, with that out of the way, I think what we're going to do is tear apart my Shape Oko 2, and in between tearing it apart and reassembling it with the x carve components, I'm going to compare things like the x gantry to the x gantry on the Shape Oko, and vice versa on all the other parts. So, let's get going and see how it all goes. I'm kind of excited to get moving on this. The disassembly only took about 40 to 45 minutes to actually get done. So I really don't think it adds too much to the expected assembly time of the X-Carve. I really don't know what else to mention about the disassembly process, other than giving a little bit of thought towards organizing and keeping track of what hardware goes to what part. There is one bit of conflict in my mind, though. You see, according to the rules of Shape Oko, no matter how much you modify your machine, it always remains a Shape Oko. So I guess, technically, this is an X-Carve upgraded Shape Oko, right? Hmm. I'll probably just call it an X-Carve for simplicity's sake. Uh, so, kind of comparing these things, you know, they're they're pretty much, you know, they're, they're not much different really in height or width or anything like that. They're pretty similar uh, in those respects. There's obviously the difference between, you know, how they're, you know, strapping everything together, where this is a single piece of uh, extruded aluminum. Uh, you know, and it has these two big long support strands, or you know, spans that go between the two uh, walls. You have on this, you have six bolts with spacers that are holding it together. They both feel really, really strong. So rigidity-wise, I don't really know. I'm not an engineer. I can't really tell you which one would be stronger. Uh, but this one seems to be really, you know, strong. So I think it's going to be nice question of what is it going to be stronger i don't know what i can tell you i think is going to be uh, better about this is squareness if you notice this this is something i built you know this is the first time or i built this thing back two years ago almost now or so when i first made my machine and you can tell there's a little bit of a wobble there it's obviously not completely square i think that that's going to be one of the advantages that this extrusion has over this uh, assembly uh, in in a lot of ways, you know, I think that these are going to be something that makes the X carve more consistent across the board, uh, rather rather than this, where you know mine does this, and who knows what other people do. So yeah, yeah, that might be something that can change. Another really cool thing that I've, I noticed is where these bolt holes are, or these bolts that at, make up the support that holds these two together, two plates together. This one doesn't have any of that. That means that you could put an 80 millimeter extrusion on here with maker or uh, with open rail on it, and make a much you know bigger, beefier uh, Z axis. So that might be actually kind of one of the things that makes this really, really cool. So I I don't know. We'll have to see. So now we have the the wide gantry plates, whatever you want to call them. Uh, you can kind of see the wheels and everything on them, and the some of the idler pulleys. The thing I think that is going to be interesting here is where the the motors are placed and where the maker slide is placed versus where it was on this. Uh, 
I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I think that the whole, you know, idea of the X car of having more of these smaller holes that are, you know, not as much, you know, no play in them like there is with these slots. I think that's going to make it a little bit more consistent across the board when you're first setting it up, a little less uh, easy to uh, mess it up or make it so it's not as square. You know, I think that getting it square will be easier this way. So that should be very interesting as far as I'm concerned. Another thing is obviously belt engagement should be uh, potentially greater with the way that this is all set up here. So those are kind of the few things that I noticed. Of course, we have the end plates that kind of uh, are interesting. You know, these seem so much more beefier, but really, honestly, these are the same thickness and they're just kind of changing out where their you know, holes are. I honestly think they'll be fine. Uh, and obviously, they're also the same thing as they're getting rid of the slots and going with the smaller holes that can't be um, messed around with as easily and give it a little bit more, you know, ease of, you know, making sure that it's square. You know, there's less play, so there's going to be less problem of it not being square, I would say. The other thing, as I would point out, is most people that set up a Shape Oco 2, they use these holes and this slot. That's it. So, and I think that that's probably a factor of making these things slimmer and smaller and cutting down on what is on them. Because, you know, honestly, why make something that you don't necessarily need that all it is is meant to hold some maker slide and, and tension a belt and, you know, strap it to this piece of extrusion down here. So, yeah, I think they look pretty good. I think they'll be worth a try. All right, so I just wanted to show real quickly how I'm mounting my limit switch on my Y uh, axis. So this is going to be right, uh, well, eh, can't show you because I'd have to change the camera angle. But anyways, it's mounted onto the two holes for the drag chain uh, that aren't being used. And also then I've got the wire popping up through there uh, for the wiring bracket hole. So that, I think that's going to work. These are the two little holes that are actually supposed to be used for the uh mechanical limit switch that they that inventable sells but eh, i like my i like my hall effect sensors so i'm going to keep using them and i think i got it figured out uh all i had to do to make it clear the magnets which the magnets are just little pieces or little neodymium magnets that are on a piece of metal that ride along on the t-slot so i can adjust it easily so that clears that but to make that clear it i had to add one extra washer to the wheels so I think that's going to all work out just fine. I just want to talk briefly about the assembly process in general. Other than a few snags that I ran into, which we'll talk about in a few seconds, I'm really happy with how everything went together. As far as time goes, it took about four hours or so to get everything up and running again. I was also fairly impressed with how level and square everything went together without spending too much time working on it. I used calipers, a machinist square, and a tape measure to set up the machine. And after I was done recording, I double checked everything with the test dial indicator and height gauge. I mounted the test dial indicator to the z-axis and swept the indicator from one end of my aluminum work area to the other. I found that there was about two and a half to three thousandths difference in height from end to end. It's not perfect but I'm quite happy with those results right now. One problem that I ran into was that the new belt clips seemed to let the belt slip rather easily when trying to tension the belt. To solve this problem, I used a small file to remove the powder coating from the slots that the belt loops through on the belt clips. I noticed on the forum that a lot of people made suggestions to use zip ties or even heat shrink, but I found that getting rid of the powder coat seemed to help quite a bit. After figuring out a workable solution to stop the belts from slipping, I really kind of like how the new belt clips allow you to tension the belt. It's really quite a novel experience after dealing with the Shape Oco belt clips for so long. Mounting my drag chain and support bracket to the X-carve frame ended up being very painless. There seems to be plenty of room to work with and that makes me really happy to see that the X-carve is staying true to its heritage of modability. To fasten the one end of the drag chain to the X-carriage, I ended up taking a piece of aluminum and made a support bracket and fastened it to one of the X-carriage stepper motor screws. I used an M5 screw, 3 quarter inch spacers, and an M5 nut on the other end of the support bracket to fasten to the drag chain. Not surprisingly, I ended up employing a very similar solution on the Y-axis drag chain as well.
Another small problem that I had to solve involved the T-nuts that fastened the Z-axis maker slide to the X-carriage. This of course was totally self-induced, and had to do with the fact that the bolt holes for the T-nuts on the X-carriage are closer to the top and bottom, causing a slight conflict for the spacers I use for leveling the axis. To solve this I used a grinder to shorten the T-nuts on one side. After that I just had to finish up doing all the wiring and then routing all the wires through the drag chain, and then finally finishing up the mounting of the spindle. Then I was finally ready to do a powered manual test on my X-Carve upgraded Shape Oco. For the sake of brevity, or at least the notion of it, I won't bore you with a hello world. That being said, I didn't encounter any kind of electronic snafu, which is always a plus. Hopefully that gives you a better idea about what goes into a Shape Oco 2 upgrade kit. My thoughts on this kit so far are generally positive. Till I get the opportunity to do some more uh, demanding projects on it, I think I'm gonna have to reserve judgment on whether or not it's more rigid or more capable than a Shape Oco 2. Now the assembly process, or in my case the reassembly process, was a lot easier than I expected. Also, I'm very pleased with how square the machine went together without putting too much effort into it. Obviously I'm going to spend some more time trying to eke out every bit of accuracy I can, but honestly, this does seem like an improvement to me. One irrefutable fact is that this kit should uh, increase the cutting area in the y-axis. I'm really interested in doing some measurements and figuring out just what kind of an increase we're talking about. Bottom line for right now, I think that the Shape Oco 2 upgrade kit is very interesting. I like a lot of the features that I'm seeing, and I can actually say that they seem like functional improvements. Unfortunately, it's a situation of incremental improvement over the previous generation. What I can say for certain right now is that if you're looking at buying a brand new machine, I would definitely recommend looking at the X-Carve. Uh, I've been a happy uh, Shape Oco 2 user for a long time now, and the X-Carve is more or less a refined and improved Shape Oco 2, and that's not a bad thing at all. So that's my opinion on the Shape Oco 2 upgrade kit from Inventables. Now, I'm really curious what everybody else's thoughts are on this kit, and also on the X-Carve in general, so sound out in the comments below. And as always, I really appreciate the comments, the likes, the shares, and if you're not already, please consider subscribing to this channel. Bye.